Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is set number 2504, Spaghetti Dojo from the very first ever LEGO Ninjago Wave. This set contains 373 pieces, 3 minifigures, and originally retailed for $49.99 in the US when it first released back in 2011. This video is of course a part of my Ninjago throwback review series where I go back and take a look at older Ninjago sets, so make sure to let me know in the comments which set you want to see a throwback review on next. It could be any set from 2011 to 2018, and while I don't have them all, I do have a lot of them, and I may end up using your suggestion for the next video. But now, with all that being said, let's get into the review. So here's the Spijitsu Dojo, and the younger people in the audience may not remember this, but when I was a kid, this was the only Monastery of Spijitsu we had. A couple of years ago, we got the Legacy version, which is fantastic, and it matches the show perfectly. But yeah, this is how the original version of that set looked, which is not really at all how it looks in the show. Still though, this was a set I always wanted as a kid, some of my friends had it, but I personally never had it, and I just finally got it for the first time this year. So let's take a look at everything that it has to offer. Starting on the left side here, this set very much tried to capture like the training cores that we see in the show where the ninja are like jumping and trying to dodge all these different obstacles. And while that part of the set is actually quite small here, there's still quite a bit of fun to be had. Starting out, there's these two axe blades that could fall down right here. So of course, you'd have your character running through and you'd either have to jump over those axe blades or slide underneath them. There's also like a tan bar right here, I guess, for them to try to balance on. And that leads to like a little bit of bamboo right here. Then there's a tiny little bit of water with some spikes coming out of it. We can actually see this a little bit better if we open the build up because there is a super tiny transformation with this set. You can have it angled like this or you can move those side sections to make it completely flat like this. But yeah, once flat, you can see this spikes a bit better, and the idea is you'd have your character hang on to this chain right here and sort of swing across, and that gets you to the main platform in the center. Then cutting across all the way over to the other side, you can see there's another pit right here, but instead of water with spikes in it, this is like a fiery lava pit. But once again, there's that chain hanging down above for the ninja to swing across. And then once again, there's a bar to walk across, but instead of those swinging axe blades, there's these spinning swords instead. And you actually just turn a gear at the back, and then it'll actually spin all the swords at the front. And I think this was my favorite play feature in the set when I was a kid. I remember going over to my friend's house and just constantly having my ninja jump back and forth over this. But yeah, you just imagine them jumping over it, or you can actually see there's some studs in the wall right here, so that way you can have the minifigure do a wall run instead, and that's really cool both for play and for display. And then of course everything ends on the other side right here. Now that's everything to the actual training course, again very simple, but I do remember finding it to be a lot of fun when I was little, and I mean I still think it's fun to this day. But now let's take a look at the actual aesthetics of everything, so they used four of these printed like window pieces in this set, and these were used in a lot of the 2011 Ninjago sets. This is before they invented Ninjargon, so they just used random like Chinese and Japanese characters on the walls, so I'm not sure exactly what these say, but if I remember correctly it usually didn't mean all too much. You've got that classic black and red dojo design at the top right here too with a sticker on it, again with two more characters. And then turning things around to the back, you can see how everything works. You can just flip the axe blades down like this and then pull them back. Nothing too complex going on there. You can also see there's a flick missile here, which these were very common back in 2011. They still come in some sets nowadays, but they're not nearly as common as they once were. But yeah, based on the way these work, you either push in on them or actually flick them, and this missile will shoot out. You can see on the other side of the dojo, aesthetically, pretty much everything's exactly the same. You've got the spot to wall run, which is a little bit different. But yeah, it's got the same exact printed pieces on this side that we saw on the other side. And a sticker in a very similar style at the top, however, it does have different characters on it. Turning this part of the build around, here's that gear to spin the swords. And there is another flick missile on this side, too. And then finally coming to the huge area in the center, you can see there's these giant double doors at the back right here. These are incredibly oversized, I have no idea why they need to be this big, and yet each of those can be individually swung open. And you can see hidden behind the doors is actually one of the shuriken's vice. That's of course the collectible golden weapon in this set, and there's also a play feature that ties in with it too. So there's this giant platform right here to pose many figures, tons of studs, lots of room, you can have the ninja fight the skeletons here. But if you push back on this red piece behind the shuriken vice, that'll actually pop that platform off. And I guess that's just meant to be a trap for the skeletons, right? Like, they break in and try to steal the shuriken, and uh-oh, the floor collapses beneath them. And there's how all that looks underneath. You can see the shuriken itself sort of hangs down now without that platform to keep it in place. It's a fairly simple play feature, but especially for 2011, I think that's fun. Now moving up the center section, though, you can see there's some of these lanterns hanging down. There was actually one of those on each side, too, that I didn't point out. This was another thing that just came in so many of the original 2011 Ninjago sets. And even though it's a very basic build, I don't know, I think they look quite good. And then, of course, coming to the very top of the build, there's that iconic temple or shrine design that many Ninjago sets have used. They still use the same aesthetic in some sets to this day, and this was one of the first to do it. You got the white and red circle in the center, another sticker part of the top which sort of matches with the other two. Two little flames coming off as well, one on each side, and then there's spears with flags hanging off of them, and these are also stickered pieces, though the two stickers on each side are exactly identical to each other. Here's a look at this entire section from the back if you're curious. And then one last thing I want to mention is the Technic parts that come off the sides of the dojo. You got a Technic pin on one side, and a Technic hole on the other. And there's a few different 2011 Ninjago sets that do that, and I think the idea is that you can combine them all to make one big build. However, I don't know if they necessarily go together the best. Alternatively, you could get four of this set and sort of make a giant dojo, and that actually would be pretty cool. I would have loved that as a kid. But the weird part is, those are usually tied in with spinner battle arena sets. Sets that have specific things that are meant for two spinners to fight inside. And this set does come with a spinner, and it does have like the sort of shape of a spinner battle arena. However, the spinner itself can't really interact with this build at all. So yeah, while I'm always very happy to get a spinner, I'm not really sure why this set is built like it's a battle arena, but doesn't have actually anything 
anything to interact with the spinner. I'm not going to complain about getting an extra spinner, but it's just a bit odd to me. But now actually taking a look at the spinner up close, this is the Sensei Wu spinner, and I believe this is the only wide release set that this exact version of the Sensei Wu spinner came in. Now it did come in at least one other set that was not wide released, however for a lot of people this might have been the only way to get it. And yeah, because it was a spinner that wasn't for any of the skeletons nor any of the main ninja, this made this feel extra special. And you can see it's just entirely white with like these dragon symbols on it, and then a bit of gold of course to represent Wu. If you've never seen the 2011 spinners before, you just slot a minifigure on the top like this, and then you can have them hold a weapon out to the side. And if you have a friend with another spinner, you can launch it against them, or if you're on your own, you can just line up a minifigure and try to hit it. These were my absolute favorite thing when I was a kid. They're the reason I fell in love with Ninjago in the first place. So I love whenever I get the chance to take a look back at them. And then to tie in with the spinner, the set also came with five different Ninjago cards. The first one at the front is, of course, the character card for Sensei Wu. And Sensei Wu was a really powerful card because he had power in all the different elements. So he was a great character to play as. And then also comes a four standard card. So we have the golden version of Higher Ground. There's Snow Surfing, Fling Pit, which I think was like the most common card. I remember I have a lot of this one. And finally, Shaky Bones. This one was busted when actually playing the game. I remember using that a lot. Uh, yeah, great to see these here. Again, I don't believe any of them are exclusive. This version of Higher Ground might be, but just awesome to get regardless. And now moving to the minifigures, here are the first two in this set. We have Sensei Wu and we have Zane. Starting with her accessories, Sensei Wu of course comes with a standard staff piece, but then Zane comes with this giant spear. Now this spear was part of the reason I wanted this set so badly when I was a kid. I just thought it was so neat how like incredibly oversized this piece was. I always really wanted to use it on the spinners, and while I never ended up getting this set as a kid, I did get this piece from elsewhere, and then I discovered it hardly even works on the spinner because it is just so clunky. And makes it spin really awkwardly. Still though, that's a very wacky and fun part, and certainly helps us set the set apart. But yeah, in terms of the minifigures themselves, these are of course the original versions of both Wu and Zane. So as such, they are relatively simple designs compared to more modern figures, but that does not make them bad by any means. In fact, I quite like both of these minifigures. Starting with Wu, his beard piece was all new here, and I think it's perfect. Same thing with the hat at the top. I always liked how his belt piece was the same as the rest of the ninja, except it was in black, to show that he is the master. And the fact that he had a back torso print was really nice too, because as you can see with Zane, back torso prints were not the most common back in 2011. The 2011 ninja suits are some the few Ninjago figures to not have back torso printing. Also, yeah, I can see this is a little scuffed up. I got this set used, so I guess the figures themselves are not in the best condition, but I have so many of this figure anyway, I'm not super bothered by it. And then here's a look at Wu's original full torso and face print with everything removed. Simple design, but I like how he's a symbol right there. The printing on his face is actually really sharp. I kind of miss that. Printing is not that sharp anymore. But yeah, this is a very nostalgic design. And then 2011 Zane is even more nostalgic to me because he was my favorite ninja when I was a kid, one of my first Ninjago minifigures ever, and I still love this ninja suit to this day. I do think white and gold just in general is a fantastic color combination and the brown just ties it all together really nicely. He of course uses the classic ninja mask, which I always like because you can attach any accessory to the back, it doesn't have to be a katana. And then of course he has his original face for underneath, where he's got like this angry neutral expression. But yeah, I love both these minifigures and I think they're both perfect inclusions in this set. I believe this also might have been the cheapest wide release set to come with this version of Sensei Wu. That's a lot of qualifiers there because he definitely came in other outfits and other wide release sets. And he also came in cheaper sets that were not wide released, but I think this was the cheapest wide release way to get him. So that's a nice thing I guess. But yeah, nothing too crazy. And then our final minifigure in this set is the one and only villain minifigure in this set, we have Knuckle the Skeleton. I liked this figure a lot back in 2011 because I really liked the character of Knuckle in the show just because he was so fun and goofy, but now that we do have the legacy versions of the Skullkin, I feel like they did it a lot better, just because he has so much personality in the show and that really isn't captured here. He actually looks kind of cool in this outfit, which is nice to see, but he's not like a cool, awesome character in the show, he's a goofy guy, and this figure doesn't have that goofiness. Now that's probably because the figure was designed before the show, but it would have been nice if those two matched a little bit more. In terms of accessory, he of course comes with a bone axe. And then he just uses the standard Skulkin armor piece, which you can see has blue spikes on it, like this little skull face. I love how many different surfaces are printed because this is before dull molding was a thing. So all those spikes are actually printed, they're not a dull mold. And same thing on the head too, like the mohawk's a print, this crack on the side's a print, the eyes, the mouth, the eye patch, lots of different colors used. It's honestly a level of detail we don't see too often anymore in LEGO. Like don't get me wrong, modern LEGO figures are a lot more detailed in other ways, but seeing so many different surfaces printed in so many different colors, I don't know, it makes this figure feel pretty special. And then there's a full look at his torso print with everything removed. And so Overall, what are my thoughts on this set? Reviewing 2011 sets is always very interesting because it feels like LEGO had a much different design philosophy back then. Because while modern LEGO sets sort of balance play features and actual looks, a set like this feels like it's made solely for play. However, that's not a bad thing. Like, as I mentioned, this is a set that I did not have as a kid, but I did get to play with a bit as a kid, and I loved it. I always wanted it. So for nostalgia reasons, I'm so happy to finally have this in hand. But in terms of like the quality of a display piece, this is nowhere near the Legacy Monastery. The Legacy Monastery is what this wants to be, but so, so much better. Still though, 
don't think that makes this a bad set by any means. Like, I don't want to discount play as, like, play is a bad thing. Like, no, play is what LEGO sets should have, and this is really, really good at that. And it also doesn't look bad. Like, it is still cool. It's just clear that the visual appearance is not the main focus of this set. I will say there's probably a reason why I didn't get this back in 2011. Well, number one, I was nine years old, and I only got what I got, like, as gifts from my family, or what I could save up for. But no, the reason why I prioritize other sets over this one is the price on it was actually kind of bad even back in 2011. $50 for not even 400 pieces? That sounds like a 2023 set. But no, in all seriousness, it is a little bit small for the price, especially considering it only has three minifigures. I mean, I guess the spinner does drive up the value a little bit, but even still, this feels like it probably should have been 40 max. Now, I don't believe this set's too expensive on the aftermarket. Like, I know I got this one used, but I think I got it used for like $35. So if you're looking for a fun older set for play, this would be one I recommend. But if you're someone who collects more for display, there might be better options out there in terms of old sets. But of course, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, make sure to let me know in the comments which Ninjago set you want to see a throwback review on next. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!